That's why the Bible tells us, don't be deceived. You can't trick God. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows, that shall they also reap. Whatever a person sows, that shall they also reap. For if he or she sows to their flesh, they shall of the flesh reap corruption. If I go with a concept, an idea, a decision based on my emotions, my will, my body, I'm going to reap what? Corruption, which is ruin. I'm going to ruin myself. But if I sow to the Spirit, I shall love the Spirit, reap life everlasting. If I obey the word, see, God says this word, they are spirit and they are life to you. If I obey the word, sow to the Spirit, sow the word, sow to the Spirit, then I'll reap life everlasting. No one can taint my harvest. No one can choose for me. But I can't be deceived. I got to know no one can bend God. No one can trick God. Whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. And in due season, let us not be weary. In due season, say due season. season. We shall reap if we don't quit. And you got to understand in everything you sow, whenever you make anything a seed, God had already previously programmed in it a due season. It's impossible to sow anything and not have it come up multiplied and God has programmed that alarm clock to go off and it's called due season and it's your job just to continue and to make sure that you are there when it goes off and in due season we shall reap if we faint not if we don't quit are you with me well pastor we talking about all this sowing stuff because he said whatsoever thing you sow whatever you sow no, so most people just think money. He said, whatever thing you sow. If you look through the Bible, you'd know that God said faith is seed. Among other things. But specifically, Luke 17, they said, you know, oh, increase our faith because God demanded that they forgive beyond what they expected or anticipated or felt comfortable with forgiving. And they said, oh, God, increase our faith. He said, if you had faith as a seed. I know it says that's a mustard seed. We don't care about it. Just boil all that. He says, if you had faith as a seed, so faith is what? Seed. And what do you do with seed? You right. sow it. And whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Right, right. Don't stop believing. Amen. Oh, that was good. That was, that was, that was, y'all treat me bad. That was, oh, man, I'm, I'm teaching better than you. Praise the Lord, saying amen, glory to God. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, that, that, that is good right there. That, that is good. All right, so we've been talking about the tr- primary test people fall under. Why are we talking about the three primary tests people fall for? So you don't fall for it. Look at all y'all like, so we can see an accident. No, you're not. Quit looking loin. So you don't fall for it. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Right? So we've, we've dealt with the first trap the first test and what is that to keep you from faith. just if God can keep you from receiving faith to be excuse me if Satan can keep you from receiving faith in God to begin with he's just ecstatic about that but even if a person accepts and receives faith the faith of God he's going to work overtime to get that person to quit to give up or release that's the same as them not having gotten in the beginning with their faith so the first one is to give up To not use faith, to not live by faith. That's the first trap, and we dealt with that. Now we're dealing with the second one, and it's equally as devious. The second trap is to misplace your faith. Not have your faith in God, but to put it in wrong locations. Are you with me? Okay. So make sure you place your faith in God. Make sure you place your faith where? In God. See, God's got a lot of bad rap, a lot of false accusations thrown at him based on people being duped out of their faith. And I think you're seeing that as we go through this. Because people say, I tried that faith. Okay, if you tried it, that means you didn't keep it. And whenever we say we're trying something, means we're not going to do it. I mean, be real.
means they are factoring in no. That try means I got an out, which is not faith. Faith is all in. No safety net, no backup plan. All in, all or nothing. Amen? Now this one, so again, you got an enemy, he's going to resist you all, all the way along. If he can get you to misplace your faith, what happens if you misplace your keys? Can you drive your car? You got a car. You got a right to drive the car. Is the car workable? Does it got gas? You got insurance? If you got all those things, all things being equal, it don't help you if you lose your keys. But you didn't lose your keys. You misplaced them. See, so don't, don't, don't let the first words be, I lost my keys. That would be catastrophe. That, oh my. No, you just misplaced them. Now, Lord, reveal to me where I placed them last because I missed it. Lost is lost. Lost is gone. I didn't lose my keys. I misplaced them. If the enemy can get you to misplace your faith, see, that's what people think, though. They lost it. I lost my faith. Or, they, or people look at them and say, they lost their faith. No, no, no. You misplaced it. If you misplace it, it's not going to work. You have the Ferrari sitting in the driveway, collecting dust. After a while, it's going to put an oil slick around your driveway, right there. So we talked about, we're going to talk about six ways. We talked about two of them already, where people misplace their faith. The first one we talked about, do you all remember? Money. Was money. Pretty good, a couple weeks ago. Money. People take their faith out of God and put it in money. And we looked at, I mean, it's nothing new. We looked at the example of, of Simon <clears throat> when Peter and John were sent from Jerusalem to Samaria because they had been born again. They'd received Christ and been baptized, but they hadn't received what? The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, so that John and Peter went to go check it out, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because if you receive salvation, you're born again, you're baptized, you surely are, have a right to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. But he had not yet uh, come on them. And when he went down there, they went down there, they laid hands on the people. And when Simon, the Bible says, and when Simon saw them, saw them what? Lay hands on the people. Well, that don't, you touch the person next to you. No, no one, I didn't get attention. So obviously he saw the supernatural. He saw them begin to speak with other tongues and have this boldness and have the power of God come on them. And he said, you know, as he saw them lay hands and the people receive the Holy Spirit, he went to them and told you as much as what he said. He said, here, let me give you money so you can give me the power to put, lay, that so whoever I lay my hands on, they receive the Holy Spirit. They said, no, it don't work like that. So his confidence his conviction wasn't in God, wasn't in believing God. It was in, I got enough money, I got enough money. If I give you enough money, I got enough money, that, that'll fix it. No. Don't act like people don't do that today. And so then we went to another trap of people misplacing their faith. When things start... Not working out as they expect. That's, that's all the enemy has to do, let you see something you're not expecting. Ah, and then here comes here, that starts the test. And people who don't have a lot of faith, when they start seeing that test, they start trying to, well, what, what, what? Instead of having done all, stand. Make sure I'm doing everything in faith I've been expected to do. Well, they start looking for money. They start looking for work. Let me, let me, let me put some work in. Let me get busy. Let me go to town. And the Bible says, you know, in Proverbs says, do not labor, labor not to be rich. Cease from your own wisdom. Oh, yes, pastor, but it says in 10.4 Proverbs that he who deals with a slack hand becomes poor, but he that is diligent shall be rich. Okay, diligent didn't say work. You, you better get a dictionary. Diligence doesn't mean working a lot. It means being efficient and proficient at what it is you are doing. And if you want to go to work, you ought to go to Jesus, who tells us what our work is. Because people went to Jesus when they had the opportunity. They said, Jesus, what do we got to do? 
What do we got to do to do the work of God? What does God require of us? In John 6, 29, Jesus answered them and said, this is the work of God. So if we're going to be diligent, and, and I'm not saying you're not supposed to work. If you don't work, you don't eat, the word says. But to go overboard and put faith and confidence in that, not going to work. Shoot, people losing their job, losing work. They're freaking out. Don't have your faith in work. If you're going to be diligent, be diligent in the work God reveals to us. He says, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he sent. Go ahead and look at John, Gospel according to John chapter 6. John 6. Y'all here? Yes. Yes. Ask the person next to you. You getting this? <laughs> when you got John 6, look at verse 29. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, you'll see it when you get there. This is the work of God. That you believe on him whom he has sent. Huh. So if we're going to be diligent, our diligence should be in making sure and working everything he reveals to us to work. That we're believing on him, faithing on him, not thinking something in agreement with him. Belief means faith. In our modern terminology, believe means to mentally agree, mentally assent to something. That's not what he's saying. This has nothing to do with mental. When he says the work is to believe on God, it means to hang your life on him. Rely on it, depend completely on him. Y'all getting this? Which is work. And let me just tell you, what's so an example is, go to Hebrews 4 real quick. Example is, when I take my stance of faith, the enemy's going to come, come check it. And instead of my natural tendency coming from my mind or my body to say, let me get another job. Or if I just get enough money. That's not working the work of God. The work of God to believe on Christ is to put those things down under your subjection. No, that's not the answer. I I don't want you to miss this. It, it, It is that straightforward. That's the type of work that Jesus is talking about. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he sent. You can't believe anything else. You can't. Go with anything else. You can't rely on and bank on anything else. You got to do the work to say, no, my money will perish. All money will perish. Riches profit nothing in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. So, no, I can't, I can't, I can't slip into money. I can't think, well, you know, because my parents drilled it into me, I got to work, I got to work. I gotta, that's not going to get you out of your jam. You got in here by faith. <laughs> Doing something else is only going to make it work. It ain't going to get you out. You can't get out a different way than you got in. Your ways out is going to be continuing. Don't stop believing. Continuing in faith. Did you get that? Is that too simple? Did you, come on, it's got to be practical. That's the literal work. Putting your body under, putting your mind under. No, we won't. We're not going to trust it. We're not going to ask anybody for help. If, if, you got to hear what I'm saying. I'm trusting God. No, I'm not going to use that artificial thing. No, I'm not going to go to that external thing. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm trusting God. That's the person that you get that? Yeah, because that's how people mess up. They they don't see it. They just, I'm going to go get three, four more jobs. I got bills due. I'm going to go three, four more jobs. That's going to get you more bills. Yeah. Guaranteed. How you going to get to them jobs? What you going to eat to do them jobs? Right. Who you going to pay to take care of everything else? You got them jobs. Right. How about the psychology appointments you're going to have to have for your wife and your husband? <laughs> Guaranteed. More jobs, more bills. Doesn't work. You ought to be in the work God told you to do to begin with. That's believing on him. 
oh, I'm, I'm doing this job. I'm doing it to the best of your ability. God, no matter what it looks like, God not forgotten about you. God's doing something. And seed always works in secret, underground, invisibly. You don't see it. And it's working. Stay put with joy in your heart, doing what God had. Do it under the Lord with joy. Do it under God what he has for you to do. He is your provision. He wants you to learn that. He wants to prove it to you. And you, not yourself. I don't know if you're getting this. I think some people are like, really? It's that simple. So you think it's that right. A lot of people think it's that right. Well, if I have a big bill, I should go get more jobs. Now, if God don't tell you to. Now, if God tells you to, yeah. But he already said, don't labor to be rich. What I'm talking about, rich doesn't mean millionaire, billionaire. It means one more dollar than you need. Rich means abundantly supplied. If you don't have enough to supply, you know, to take care, everything goes out, you ain't rich. When you got one dollar over what's going out, you're rich. Amen. Biblically speaking, you're rich. Now don't go spend that dollar. Let God increase you. I, I, I think this is just maybe too practical. I think just everybody wants to whiz, bam, sizzle. I'm calling your mama up. No. Well, we're not there yet. <laughs> you understand what the work of the Lord? The work is to bleep God. I'm going down if you don't get me out. Right. I'm out right. if you don't get me up. Right. I'm only going to do, and I'm only obligated from your standpoint to do, what it is you show me to do. That's working, believe in him. Uh, where the have you go? Where'd y'all run to? Hebrews 4. All right, real quick, real quick. You, 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 we've been here before, but let's, let's put in some context. Hebrews 4, I suggest you read chapter 3 as well. God is reminding us of the example provided for us by his people, the Israelites, who he delivered supernaturally from bondage. Not to live in the desert, but to go into a land, the most prosperous land known, still even to this day, the Fertile Crescent, the land that flows with milk and honey. He meant to take them from Egypt right there. They got the idea that that wasn't possible. So they stopped doing the work of God, believing on him. And they yielded to their flesh. Well, no, there's giants in there. And to them, we're like little grasshoppers. Well, that's not what God said, so that's not accurate. And you read in the Bible later, the people believed God. Because when they went into Jericho, there's a woman named Rahab, and she said, man, we've been scared, shaken. They said there's no strength in anybody or something like no courage in anybody for fear of you. We've been waiting 40 years that you'd come this way. Them turkeys walking out there for 40 years doing their work. Not doing the work of God, which is believing God. And Caleb and Joshua, know they went to the strip thing, you know, ripped their clothes, said, we're going to do this thing. And the mob shouted them down, but they got to go in. God remembered them, and they were the leaders, and they were the head. They were blessed. They didn't die out there. They got those years and kept them because they kept believing that whole time. That's what's being discussed here in chapter 3 and 4. So you kind of know the context. Now, what God was saying is that the promised land, for our purposes, he, he changes the term. He doesn't call it promised land for us because we don't have a physical land. But that promised land to them was rest. What is rest? No more working. See, God doesn't want you working. The work is to trust him working. That's the work that God has for us to do. Trust God is working. Don't go to work unnecessarily. <laughs> Are you getting this? Yeah. So look at verse 9, chapter 4, verse 9 in Hebrews. There remains, therefore, a today. There remains a what? So faith in God is rest. Faith in God is an advantage. Yeah. 